Coming up, the Marlins blow things open late against the Astros. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts join us. Then we recap all of the action for you across Major League Baseball yesterday. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The Marlins hit three home runs in a row in the eighth inning, and that put away the Astros in Miami on Monday. Our Locked On Astros host has more after Houston's loss. Hey there, H.M. Wellhouse here with Locked On Astros, and the Astros fall to the Marlins 5-1 to one tonight. It was a close game, 2-1, to one, and the Astros had many chances. They did not do too well with runners in scoring position, 2-12 for 12 in that category the game before they were 0-8. for 8. That is definitely something that needs to be fixed. A lot of people want to pin this on Maldonado or Dusty Baker in his lineup. The bottom line is the offense has got to perform more consistently. So the Astros drop the first of three to the Marlins. They come back tomorrow. Hopefully they can square it up at one apiece and then come out with a series victory on Wednesday. Stay tuned in to Locked on Astros. Remember, we're your team every day. Go Strohs. The Braves were able to beat up on the Yankees with 11 runs against New York yesterday. Locked on Yankees tells us what went wrong for New York. Coming into the game Monday night, Yankee starter Clark Schmidt had a stretch of 14 straight starts in which he surrendered three or fewer runs. That stretch came to an abrupt end against Atlanta. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees, and Schmidt only lasted two and one-third innings. He gave up eight runs on nine hits. He walked two, struck out three, gave up a home run. It was not the homecoming that he had wanted or, you know... Yankees needed because the Yankees needed to recover from their blown game against Miami on Sunday. That did not happen against the best team in baseball. Atlanta was relentless at the plate, scored 11 runs total, and the Yankees were not relentless at the plate, only scored three. Turns into an 11-3 victory for the Braves. We talk about this game and we discuss the state of the rotation on the next edition of Locked on Yankees and also Tuesday's matchup. Luis Severino against Bryce Elder. Either it's going to be the worst thing you've ever seen in your life for Severino, or it's going to be a reverse lock. Guess we'll find out. Four runs from the Cardinals in the seventh inning sent St. Louis past Oakland in their Monday matchup. Locked on Cardinals has more after the game. Two not-so-good baseball teams had to play each other on Monday, and somebody had to win. This time, it was the Cardinals. Hey, it's J.D. from Locked on Cardinals, and until the seventh inning, We had a nice little pitcher's duel going between the A's and the Cardinals, but when the bullpens got involved, things revved up rather quickly. The A's played three in the seventh inning thanks to a pair of two-out hits off of Giovanni Gallegos. They take the lead five to three, but in the bottom half of the inning, the A's pen forgets how to throw strikes all together and walks four batters in the bottom half. And then a bases clearing triple from rookie Jordan Walker, which, if we are being honest, probably should have been caught by Seth Brown. But during this season... We'll take it. And it gave the Cardinals the uh, 7-5 win on Monday. It wasn't pretty, but it was an entertaining game. And at this point of the season, that's all we're looking for in St. Louis. For the latest updates and info, be sure to keep it locked on Cardinals. Coming up, Max Scherzer shuts down the Angels. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Ibotta. Now that we're in the midst of summer and school might be around the corner, you might be buying a new wardrobe. Ibotta can help you out and give you cash back. You earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code MLB when you register. So just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code MLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or the App Store, and you can use our code MLB. Welcome back. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Max Scherzer gave up just one hit, and he struck out 11 in his seven innings of work for the Rangers. After a win over the Angels, our Locked On local experts join us with more. 
the Rangers uncorked an absolute walloping on the Angels, a 12 to nothing win where literally everything went right for the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Paddock, host of the Locked On Rangers podcast. The game was absolutely out of control how good everything went for the Rangers. Max Scherzer faced just one hitter over the minimum through seven innings because he got a line-out double play from Matt Thyssen. Outside of the one weekly hit single and the one walk, he was basically perfect this entire game. Seven innings of shutout ball, 11 strikeouts for him. He was just on fire in this offense, just could not stop hitting Marcus Simeon a five RBI day, including a three-run homer. Also, Adoles Garcia's 30th home run of the year. This looked like the team that was molly whopping everybody early on in the season. Looks like a surefire title contender. Everything's going right for the Rangers at the exactly right time of year. For more, check out the Locked On Rangers podcast. Hi. Oh, does my nonchalant, uninterested posture bother you? Hmm. I'm just holding the same posture that the Angels have held since the trade deadline. Uninterested, don't really care. Eh, we'll play a game. Maybe we'll win. Maybe we'll lose. Hey, everybody. It's Mike Frisch, one half of Locked On Angels. Angels lost 12 nothing on Monday night to the Texas Rangers. They got one hit. Sandoval went less than three innings, gave up a lot of runs. Canning came in. He did the same thing. The only one hit that the Angels got, it was an infield single. Everything else, they struck out or flied out. Yeah. And, and, and then Phil Nevin yelled at the team in the dugout, told them to get their bleeping heads into the bleeping game. Hey, Phil, too little, too late. John and I are going to recap this game. And we're going to talk about coaching on Locked on Angels. The Rockies scored four runs in the bottom of the eighth and came back to beat the Diamondbacks yesterday. Our Locked on hosts have more after things went final in Colorado. Late heroics from the Colorado Rockies. Young players and a big eighth inning helps the team snap a losing streak and get their second win against the Arizona Diamondbacks this season. Paul Holden here from the Locked on Rockies podcast. Love to see the offense come alive, especially after we spent so much time focusing on the struggles of this offense on its recent road trip. Highlighted, headlined by some big home runs to kick things off for the Rockies. And the Rockies bouncing back, especially late in that ballgame. Timely hitting, beating things out. Charlie Blackman looking good back off of the IL, legging out a big single lead and helping uh, contribute to a, a big inning. Chris Flexen, decent night on the bump. Uh, for him as well, keeping the Rockies mostly in this one and doing enough of a job to help this team uh, bounce back late. And the Rockies snake bite the snakes as uh, they uh, help uh, keep complicating the uh, rest of the season for Arizona. Let's see if they can continue it throughout the series. We'll be breaking it all down right here on Locked on Rockies. You could blame the bullpen. You could blame Tori Lovello, but the D-backs did it once again. Miller Thomas of Locked on Dimebacks here. The D-backs blew a 4-2 lead entering the eighth inning because Tori Lovello decided to put his most unreliable relievers in the ballgame. Kyle Nelson was warming up in the pen lefty, but instead he went with the other lefty, Joe Mantiply, who has been a fan favorite the last couple of years. But this season, Mantiply has been absolutely atrocious. And once again, he was bad tonight. Came in three straight singles, leaves the game with the bases loaded, does nothing positively. And then Scott McGuff comes in right after. We've seen him throw a ton of games this year. And, of course, he gives up some big hits. He gives up the lead. D-backs bullpen and Tori Lovello managing this game ends up blowing a very winnable game for the D-backs because Merrill Kelly over six innings only gave up two earned runs, 11 strikeouts, career high for him. But all of it went to waste. Two home runs by Christian Walker. But all of it went to waste because Tori Lovello did not decide to use his bullpen correctly tonight. McGuff and Mantiply both struggled, and the D-backs, instead of continuing a three-game win streak, started a new losing streak against the Colorado Rockies. Got to get back on track in game two and three. The Rays won a battle of wildcard contenders in each league on Monday, and our Locked On hosts have more after the West Coast matchup. Well, it was a rookie sensation kind of day for the Rays and San Francisco as they take the first game of their West Coast trip, 10 to 2. My name is Ulysses Sembrano, host of the Locked on Rays podcast. Tyler Glasnow came through 
After missing a couple starts due to back spasms, he delivered six strong innings, only allowing one run, and he really looked as good as ever. But the rookies were the ones that actually came through. Jacob Lopez with a three-inning save for his uh, on his first day in the major league, so that was pretty cool. Oslavis Basabe got his first two RBI of his career, uh, opening the score up for the Rays. And Curtis Mead, the young rookie phenom from Australia, also got in the action going three for five. For this and much more of your Tampa Bay Rays, please subscribe to all platforms off of the podcast, especially YouTube, at Locked on Rays. Rays up. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game MLB. We thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. We're in that playoff push point of the season now, so make sure that you're subscribed to Locked On MLB and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.